There's no moon. The sun ain't up. Cat woke me up over an hour ago. I'm wide awake. I tried to lie back down. That didn't work. I thought, just get up and make coffee. So I did. And I shit you not. My brand new fucking creamer has lumps in it. And yep. Fuck. Am I gross? Because it doesn't taste bad. But it's like I have sour cream. <laughs> and my coffee. And fuck, I love sour cream on baked potatoes. And a dip. So why wouldn't I fucking drink it? I don't know. I used to be that prissy girl that couldn't even eat nothing if there was something gross near it. Ever <laughs> since I was hiking in mountains and you got what you got, I will fucking eat anything now. I don't care if it falls in fucking bear shit. I will fucking eat it. I know. I guess that sounds gross, but oh well. I just saw a comment slipping through my feed of my stuff. I'm not sure how I feel about this coffee, to be honest. I'm trying to be brave. <laughs> I really want my coffee. Doesn't taste bad. A little different. If I'm like not showing up for 24 hours is <laughs> because I made myself sick. <laughs> no, I swear I don't have COVID. <laughs> I just poisoned myself with cream. <laughs> oh my God. So I just saw a comment that said, there's no one coming to save us. We save ourselves. And I believe that because I've been doing it all along. But you know I'm going to have a butt. Because <laughs> I like big butts. Yeah. I like to throw the butt in there. But from the highest perspective looking down, as we make one action or one move or one choice to actually save ourselves. Are we ultimately always doing it alone? No, we're not. It can be the simplest thing as make a choice to live. Even if you have nothing to live for. And when you go out, someone smiles at you and you have a random conversation and it gives you more of a breath of life. Right? I mean, straight up and just speak how I speak, but I ain't never met anybody who's homeless who just literally won a million dollars because they saved themselves and then moved on and just had everything they needed. Everyone needs someone or more than someone to make it through this world on some level, somehow. Because we are all one and we are all connected and we all have soul contracts with people to help them, whether we even know that we are helping them or not. My brightest passing angels in my life who have anchored me to this reality were five minute conversations or fleeting moments in time passing through. I 
I don't know if that makes sense. I kind of threw myself off track with all that coffee talk. <laughs> but this is, again, why I keep on, like, bringing back the whole spiritual programming of the Matrix stuff that's leaked into spirituality. And I just use that word because... You know, all motivators, all life coaches, you know, speak from a certain perspective of what they've lived or what they've been taught, right? You can think you're really smart because you're book smart, but if you don't have the life, it's not the same. Did you know you can become a certified fucking life coach and like, pfft, online on a weekend and any fucking time as long as you got the money to pay for it any fucking buddy with access to the internet can become a life coach right does that mean they've had a life does that mean that they are actually qualified to exchange services and help anyone right But yeah, you know, I don't watch so much stuff. And sometimes I, I, I get guided to things in order to be like, what the fuck are you talking about, Willis? Right? When you hear a woman of a certain age saying certain words out loud, yet she has no fucking clue what it's like to be alone. She's always had the anchor by her side. And she says so openly. But it's like, take that timeline away. Only some people can look at the camera and completely admit I could never have become the person I have without my anchor. I wouldn't be the woman that I am without my man. Right? Some of us are so busy fucking saving our own fucking self as we freely gift to others so much energy that it's like the knowing of because we're showing up putting our face out here our voice whatever it is we're getting back an energy of wholeness what it feels like to connect when you see the reflection of yourself in another is the only thing for me that's pulled me through the last three years for real if I hadn't chosen the timeline to just leap all in and make my first vid and have the comment flow on it to give me the, oh wow, do more, uh, I'd be in a whole other timeline. Right? I certainly know that I wouldn't be doing what I was doing anymore at all if I didn't have any connections at all. And saving myself People save me all the time. Sometimes people don't even realize, right? To what point? It's their fucking comment that made it that instead of deleting a video, I keep it up. Because it's fucking hard. Right? It ain't easy being cheesy. <laughs> Like, seriously. I know I said it before, but I'll say it again. I fucking always feel like no one building an ark, right? And I'm getting fucking... Remember, like, go watch Evan Almighty, right? 
Even his fucking wife and kids walked out the door at one point. <laughs> There's nobody left. <laughs> when you embody exactly what your higher self, source, asks of you. <laughs> and, you know, when the dam burst in that fucking movie, how everybody was running onto that arc. Oh, I don't give a shit if I thought you was crazy yesterday, Evan. I'm on the fucking arc now, bitches. <laughs> I don't know. Am I done building the ark yet? <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. I, I have splinters. Oh, splinter ninja turtles. Seriously. And I know this is maybe not my best free flow of a vid, but fuck it. I'm gonna upload it and share it. Because the way I bounce around and is part of how I am. And there's others like me who understand that speak more than, you know, clear, coherent, eloquent, um, ah. Uh. I'm not making fun of that. Or maybe I am. But I respect it more than words. But I see through the bullshit as well. Right? Oh, speaking of seeing through the bullshit. As I was lying down earlier trying to get back to sleep. I was thinking how in so many movies and books. The most horrid of characters. When the end full circles or the climax happens. They turn out to be the characters. The people who were protecting. Who were ultimately the good guys. And that's important, especially right now, with everything that's happening. Collectively. It's so easy to judge exactly who the media wants us to judge. But ultimately, you know, if you're JFK or Martin Luther killed, you get yourself killed. So what kind of a package, what kind of uh, uh, energy would be needed in order to be a role that actually is going to get to the finish line of helping humanity? <laughs> I'm here to tell you, when you're all good and nice and shit, it ain't pretty behind the scenes. Right? People don't treat angels so good, even if they begged and screamed and wished for them. So sometimes, you know, the package that people are in and what they have to do to get us all to a certain point of awareness, you know, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Brightest lights are hidden in the darkest places. At some point, the distraction is meant to distract and where your attention is going, unless it's part of your purpose, ultimate purpose to be exposing things or bringing an awareness then you're not focusing on it and angry or blaming or you see it for what it is. There's a difference between being aware and then embedding yourself, your energy into something. Anything right now, today, that is really making you angry and that you want to blame and point a finger 
go within, figure out why. One of the things I've said, and I, you know, just because I said stuff doesn't mean that somebody heard it, right? Because it's all everywhere in the last three years, but. A lot of people don't grasp yet to what point in their past life they were the ones who did the very things that they cannot let go of how horrified they are that it's playing out in our reality. So I'm going to be very blunt and say this out loud, trigger warning, but when you're offended and horrified still with the trafficking of humans, the rituals, or certain things, it is because in a past life, you were one of the highest ultimate people who did that so much you have not forgiven yourself. Right? So some of the very things that are crumbling in the matrix, the players who started or perpetuated that are the ones who can't let go of how horrified they are that this stuff is happening still. So if in a past life you were a baby killer and you were part of the rituals you ain't forgiven yourself for that. Because as much as when people go back into past life regressions, I was this, I was that, I was a knight, I was this. Not many people actually say out loud, I was a rapist, I murdered, I did this stuff. But if you're here, if you've been here before, you've played every part. Every part. And that's the thing you can't let go of. Because it's not in this lifetime. You know in this lifetime you never did that. You never would do that. But you're so fucking still horrified by... I know, I go from giggling about fucking sour cream... To, to this, but seriously, you know, the, the going within and the understanding your own self is the way through. And forgiveness of everything is the only thing that's going to bring collective harmony and peace. I swear, if you guys even fucking a little baby bit understood how hard it is to put these fucking bits out, man. Oh, fuck balls. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, bring me some fucking reward for this today because, oh man, I swear, it ain't easy.